It's basic math. He says he's examining his options when it comes to immigration. Uh, the PQ is uh, threatened to call a referendum if, he doesn't, if, if Quebec doesn't get full control. Uh, do you think this is threatening national unity? Uh, I think the issue that uh, we have had uh, a larger number of temporary immigrants over the past years in Quebec but elsewhere across the country is one uh, that we are having to deal with. We took some concrete measures across the country and here in Quebec on the measure of on the issue of uh, uh, international students that was uh, increasing far too fast and putting at risk vulnerable international students. Uh, we've taken uh, strong measures on asylum seekers, whether it was closing down Roxham Road uh, or now reimposing a Mexican visa that has uh, brought down the numbers significantly. We've made progress on that. And there's conversations to be had around temporary workers. Uh, we know that there is a uh, need by businesses across the country to rely on uh, international workers. At the same time, we've seen those numbers increase uh, in such a rapid way that it's putting pressure on housing, it's putting pressure on uh, health care systems and, and education systems. Uh, we are all about uh, rolling up our sleeves and working with the provincial government uh, to solve some of these challenges uh, here in Quebec, but right across the country as well. And to end the carbon tax, short-term thinkers. Is the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Andrew Fury, one of those short-term thinkers? I think a lot of people are seeing the public pressure of folks who uh, are worried about the cost of living and worried about affordability. And one of the challenges that is out there is that Everyone seems to be talking about the price we've brought in on pollution. Nobody is talking about the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 families across the country than the price on pollution actually costs them. So taking away the price on pollution or uh, leveling it off where it is would actually mean less money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians uh, in the jurisdictions where it's imposed, which doesn't make sense. Canadians are squeezed on groceries, they're squeezed on rent, they're squeezed on cost of living. We are putting more money in their pockets uh, four times a year with the Canada carbon rebate, and we're going to continue to do that. So what are you going to say to Mr. Fury, though, specifically? Do you think he's a short-term thinker? I think Mr. Fury is continuing to bow to political pressure. Uh, I think Canadians in Newfoundland and Labrador and right across the country expect their governments to do the right thing. And the right thing right now is not just fighting climate change and spurring innovation for the future. It's about being there to support Canadians during this affordability crisis. And the Canada carbon rebate helps out 80% of Canadians with more money than they pay in terms of a price on pollution. It's basic math, it's basic math, it's basic math, and we're going to continue to be there to support Canadians with the Canada Carbon Rebate. Question. Stéphane Boucher, 98.5. Stéphane Boucher, 98 uh, given Mr. Legault's uh, request to have full control over immigration, what is your response? No, we're not going to change what we have now. Quebec has more powers over immigration than any other province, as it is, because it is extremely important to protect French. But what I want to achieve is for the system to work better than it does. It's not so much a question of who controls what. We are here to cooperate, to work well together. People want their systems to improve. People want us to meet the needs of Quebecers and uh, all Canadians. And as a government, we're here to work on solutions. It's not a question of uh, jurisdiction. It's a question of finding solutions. That's what I'm focusing on. Next question. François Carbin, Le Devoir. You plan to talk about health. When can Quebec expect to receive the health transfers they are asking for, as well as uh, compensation for opting out of pharmacare and dental care? We recognize that health systems across Canada have delivered 
the services that Canadians have a right to expect. That is why we are investing. We've announced $200 billion in investment over the next 10 years in health care. Part of that involved direct negotiations with the provinces to deliver in priority areas with better data collection. I am confident that before the end of the month, we'll be able to announce an agreement with Quebec on that funding. The funding we want to invest to deliver genuine, tangible results on health care. The federal government will be there to ensure Quebecers have better services. With regard to dental care and pharmacare, there's no doubt we recognize there is a problem for dental care across Canada, and that is why the federal government has put forward a program to ensure that seniors and vulnerable young people do have access to dental care. We are discussing with Quebec how we can align our programs, making sure that there's a sharing and a respect for areas of jurisdiction, but we need to make sure that people who don't have dental care can access it. We're having good conversations with Quebec on this, as we will for Pharmacare. The point is to make sure people don't have to choose between buying insulin or buying groceries. I think this is something on which we can all agree. It is very important to cover insulin, but We'll be working in partnership, and we will work with uh, Quebecers' values. Are Mr. Legault's uh, demands reasonable? Well, there are always ways of working together reasonably to ensure that the system works well. La Converse, on March 4th, 12 Canadian citizens were able to leave Gaza by themselves. The immigration minister that says he's fed up with how slowly this is going. What can you say to the people of Gaza who are waiting to leave? Well, the problem we're dealing with is that Canada has no control over the exit points to Gaza. Those are controlled by local authorities, the Israelis and others, who need to approve the exit of Canadians that Canada has already approved. So. There are a number of dealings we're having with varying authorities for them to recognize Canadian approval and uh, have people leave more quickly. We know how important it is to get Canadian families out of Gaza.